There are many key techniques a coach should be aware of and be able to use, such as demonstrations, technical instructions, observational analysis, performance profiling, goal setting, fitness assessing and programming to name a few. Many of these techniques are fine to use by themselves, but if you want to maximise their effectiveness, then it's best to use more than one at a time. Not only that, but not all players will respond to each technique in the same way. Some may learn better and gain more from a variety of techniques, and so a coach needs to work out which one works best for each player in order to maximise their performance and experience. One of the most common things seen performed by coaches is demonstrations. Demonstrations are typically performed by the coach in front of a person or group of people when teaching them a new skill. They will usually be done at the start of the session and then the participants are allowed to try and do it themselves. It's also more commonly used for beginners as it gives someone who might not have a clue what they're doing an idea of what the action should look like and give them an image to try and replicate themselves. It's particularly common for a coach to combine a demonstration with technical instruction in order to make it clearer for the learner. Typically, the demonstration would be repeated a few times and they might point out to the participants a certain part of their body to watch each time so that they can take into account what other parts of their body should be doing. A demonstration can be much clearer and simple in the sense that a single action can replace a lot of words. For some learners, they also do better by having something visual to learn from as opposed to someone just describing it. In certain situations, it may be necessary for a demo within the demo. For example, if you're teaching a smash shot in badminton, then in order to actually perform the smash, a shuttle needs to be fed um, to them appropriately. And so they may also need to demonstrate how to feed the shuttle in order for the demo to be successful. There are many pros and cons to using a demonstration. It can be broken down into around three or four coaching points to make it easier to understand. And not only can it be broken down, but it can also be slowed down. By using a demonstration, it provides a mental image for people to try and replicate. People are able to see the full action and how each stage of the motion will flow into each other and when being performed properly as it would in a game situation. It can also provide some context to the participants, such as the smash in badminton. They can see from the demo at what point it would be appropriate to use that shot due to the way it's been fed to them. Um, on the downsides though, um, if a coach doesn't feel particularly comfortable or confident with the things they're performing, then the demo won't be very good and they may also pass on incorrect information through the performance. However, some coaches might use a participant from the group who they're aware of that is able to perform the skill much better than themselves to show the rest of the group. Um, dependent on the age of the group and type of people a person is coaching, it can be quite hard to withhold the participant's attention for long enough. It can also be difficult at times to perform demos to large groups of people, and, and in addition to this, they need to take into account the position of their body in comparison to the group. It's important to make sure that everyone can see clearly and also take into account things like the position of the sun so the coach will do their demonstrations so they're facing into the sun so the participants have a better view of the demo. <clears throat> Technical instruction is a form of verbal communication to convey technique or organise for a drill. It's not very often that technical instruction will be used wholly on its own. It can be very hard for a coach to describe how they want something done or what an action should look like through words alone. However, for someone who has already has experience and a good level of ability, this can be used. For example, if a group of people are already familiar with a warm-up that uses certain words or technical language, then the coach could simply call out a certain word and the group um, of people will know what to do. This is less suitable for beginners as it's likely that any instruction would be quite long-winded in order for them to describe exactly what it is they are needed to do, and because of this it can get more complicated for them to understand. When delivering technical instruction, the coach needs to take into account the clarity, pace and volume of their instructions. If they have a lot of people to address, then obviously they would need to talk louder. Technical language can both be a pro and a con with technical instruction. On the plus side, providing that everyone is familiar with the technical language, it can mean that entire skills or plays can be communicated to players with single words or short phrases. However, if a person doesn't know what it means, or if multiple different people know a certain word to mean different things then it can lead to more confusion. Other positives is that it can be used as a form of continuous feedback throughout the entire process. So if they notice something um, is going wrong or that a person is doing something incorrectly they can tell them during the process of them doing it and they can then correct this themselves. Um, due to the fact that it's a form of continuous feedback it can be used effectively in games uh, many professional coaches will be seen giving constant feedback to players from the sidelines in game situations. 
Additionally, as technical instruction can be something as simple as a single phrase, it can be a lot quicker to get across to players what you want them to do rather than sitting them down and going through a long process of describing what you want them to do. In terms of the cons, it's not very good for beginners as they may have very limited knowledge on the sport and so by throwing technical instructions at them, it might just throw them off even more and add to their confusion. Certain skills, drills or plays can be very complex and if a person is trying to describe a thing to a the participants it can easily become overly complicated as opposed to if they use something such as a demo. Because of the complexity of these things as well as some people understanding certain words or phrases to mean different things miscommunication can occur very easily which can be much more detrimental if it occurs in an actual game situation. <clears throat> For a coach it is common that within the group of people they will be they will have um, they'll be very diverse. Some will be more able than others. There'll be different ages, genders, positions, and some may even be suffering from an injury or disability of varying degrees. Because of this, it's important that the coach can adapt their session in order to include all players. For some, this might mean using different equipment to make it easier or harder, changing the distances the skill is performed over, or it may include um, creating a feeding or officiating role for those who are unable to, part to partake in the activity themselves. By adapting to an individual's needs, it promotes equality amongst the players and helps to maintain their confidence levels, providing them with a positive experience in sport that will encourage them to take part in sport within the future. Again, there are pros and cons to adapting to individual needs. On the plus side, it means that the activity is inclusive and no one is left out. And it also makes the activity flexible, so it gives participants the option to choose what they want to do to an extent in order to ensure that they feel as comfortable as possible during the activity. It also means that if they see a certain person is finding things very easy, then they can easily adapt the activity to ensure that they are still progressing regardless of the ability of other people in the group. Um, however, there's also some downsides. Given people the option to choose which version of an activity they can do, can lead to people just picking the easiest option even if they are more capable just because they don't want to challenge themselves or they're worried they might get embarrassed and do something wrong in front of people. Of course the group size can also be an issue at times. If there is one coach and 20 participants and they need to have an altered version of the drill or activity for the majority of the people, not only will it take a lot of resources but it can also take up a lot of time from the coach so the time might not be spread so easily amongst all the players. For certain groups of people, such as the disabled, the cost for the specialised equipment that could be needed in order for them to take part can be quite expensive, and in some cases a coach will also need additional training uh, to cater for these people. <clears throat>